Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is the weekly reading for April 10th to 18th-ish. As you can tell, I'm fudging the dates a little because I'm recording this a day later than I typically do. It's Monday the 11th for me right now and I have written down all of the major transits from yesterday, <laughs> Sunday the 10th, all the way through to next week on the 18th. That's because there's just so many interesting things happening and I remember, you know, the day that the sun moved into Aries, I was like, I'm not interested in the in the planetary transits for now. I'm going to put that off until Taurus season and it turns out I didn't have to wait all the way till Taurus season for the planets to come back around. All it took was for Mercury <laughs> to move into Taurus and I was instantly like, okay planets, what are y'all up to? I'm very curious and want to know. <laughs> and um so Mercury, Mercury moved into Taurus on Sunday and <laughs> damn, okay. It, it how do how do I let me just start from the beginning, right? So before Mercury moved into Taurus, it was still at the very last few degrees of Aries and that made me realize how important the shift from the last few degrees of Aries into the first few degrees of Taurus are not just for this Mercury transit, but for any planet transiting, making that switch between Aries to Taurus for the next couple of years. And this is because Pluto is hanging out in the final degrees of Capricorn and he's going to be hanging out there for a few more years still, which means any planet moving through from, Ari from Aries to Taurus is squaring Pluto. And I felt that transit so hard because I have had a absolutely insane weekend. I was traveling to visit my husband's family and <laughs> Man, I do not recommend um, dealing with large groups of people and traveling while Mercury is square Pluto. It was a shit show, guys. Oh my god. Um, the drive home from Seattle to where I live now is usually about three and a half hours, maybe four if we take a lot of stops. Uh, it took us 11 hours because there was a blizzard in the mountains and we had to drive around the mountains and then we got stuck in traffic in the middle of nowhere and all there was, and there was a whole bunch of other things happening. It was insane, um, but we eventually made it home and as soon as Mercury moved into Taurus, it was like this beautiful slowdown and I feel so good to just be at home and getting back into my routine and into the astrological transits and just everything. And yes, so I'm glad that we are putting that particular transit behind us. It was really, um, really, really useful, really, really like healing in that kind of way where you, you know, purge thoughts and purge things that have been maybe left unsaid for way too long, things that were left unsaid for way too long, but once they're finally said, it's like, oh, it was that not, nothing was as big of a deal as you thought it was, right? So it, it was like there was this massive spike in emotional intensity, but then once everything is kind of the, the air is cleared, it, everything just fizzles away and I'm just seeing like mist fading away. So whatever like insanity you guys had over the weekend, I fully expect that to be fading away in the early, you know, early um, days of this week. And the shift is... We're moving out of that whole Mercury, um, Pluto fueled kind of tension, moving into on the 12th, the Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces. And that's really an energy we're going to be feeling for, I think, at least a week, right? It's going to be kind of permeating in the background and peaking around the tw 11th, 12th, 13th. Um, apparently, I'm getting a card for that. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Ace of Wands. Ace of Wands. How perfect. <laughs> Unlocking your magic. Putting the magic wand back in your hand is what this feels like to me. Back in your hand. Because, uh, like, to me this is a little bit of a, like a look back. A look back into the magic of Pisces season. Um, like around the Pisces new moon when we had a big Pisces stellium and but the magic of Pisces season this year for me was it was a little bit complex and it was a little bit overshadowed by just like complexity right it was very very complex now we're getting this 
blast of Pisces energy coming up, coming through this very like simplified, like Aries energy. And it's putting the wand back in your hand. Um, I, I feel like for, uh, for somebody, something that didn't quite resolve itself or couldn't quite begin in Pisces season. So like a month ago, you might be receiving a like, like a coming together, a coming together of sorts, like something coming together, something coming together. Ooh, the devil. And the emperor. <laughs> Whoa. What is this all about? These are very interesting cards to be getting for the Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces. How strange. I am beyond curious. And judgment. Bottom of the deck is High Priestess. What? <laughs> okay. Hold the presses. <laughs> so I'm using these round, these round cards because Jupiter conjunction Neptune in Pisces is very feminine, very round, right? Very round type of energy to me. It just, it feels very round. I had to use these round cards, but look at all this energy. I mean, the judgment judgment here, that's basically like a Jupiter card, right? High Priestess here, that's pretty Neptunian. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. I get it. The Emperor and the Devil, right? That That's very masculine energy. It's interesting. The Emperor is actually Aries, right? Aries energy with the Emperor. And um, of course, we're in Aries season. So I actually see how this is all kind of weaving together. So we are definitely meant to understand this Jupiter Neptune conjunction in conjunction with all of the other ambient energies of the week, right? So right at the center here, it's the Aries energy, the Aries sun, right? The sun is at the center. Aries is at the center of this. And what is the devil doing over here, right? This is Capricorn energy. And one thing I didn't write down on my sheet here, and just by the way, I'm going to have I wrote this down all in symbols, but I'm going to have all the transits for the week written down in English down in the description box if you want to check that out. But yeah, so what is the devil doing here? Why is Capricorn being represented here? Why is Saturn being represented here? And that was one thing I didn't write down, but I did note when I was kind of getting ready for this video. Um, the Saturn is kind of tangentially involved in the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction because Saturn is, oh, I wish I had written, written it down now. I'll write it down in the box down there. I'll, I'll write down what the what the exact uh, it was like a sextile, right? Saturn is sextiling something. I can't remember what it was. I'll write it down. Um, so anyway, that made me think. Oh yeah, okay. So there's since there's a significant Saturn presence going on this week, somehow Saturn is lending his energy, lending his influence to this otherwise very watery, very kind of nebulous, very expansive type of portal. There is an element of, what, what does Saturn want us to know? What does Saturn want us to know? Let me get a different deck. Because with Saturn being involved in all of these very un-Saturnian energies, it means there's something for us to learn something for us to learn something for us to learn about our own expansion <laughs> prosperity lies ahead new moon in taurus very funny so i mean the new moon in taurus will be coming up in three weeks or something right that's a topic for another day Something for us to learn. The, oh wow, this is this is really really complex. Something for us to learn about how we generate prosperity in our lives. Something for us to learn how we generate prosperity in our lives. Something about how we like take abstract energy, take non-physical energy, and literally materialize it. Like this is a lesson about manifestation. Um, about, oh boy, how do I explain this? What he, what Saturn is showing me is that there is all of this Jupiter and Neptune 
being very um like a watery whirlwind like this watery vortex because this is all in pisces right so it's this big watery um i can feel it i'm getting shivers all over the place there's this just big 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 watery vortex of massive amounts of energy swirling around swirling around swirling around and we are aligning with that look at this vertical alignment here with the ace of wands downloading it down through our crowns, down all the way through our entire system, right? Through the crown, all the way down through the root and down into the earth. You are like the pillar of creation, right? You are this pillar of light downloading all of this information. Um, but it's like we're... Saturn doesn't want us to get lost in the nebulousness of it. He doesn't want us to get lost in like the abstractness of it there he's really wanting to show us how we can use this energy how we can get pragmatic and practical and use this energy and turn it into something that you want turning it to something that will make your life easier like manifest something right how, how you can turn this energy into a manifestation turn the energy into a manifestation so the more you can ground this energy the easier it's going to be for you and the easier i mean because i don't expect this to be challenging but it could be you know, for some people, there could be a lot of ascension symptoms or it could be very overwhelming or it could be just very like a lot of energy all at once, right? So that's why Saturn is kind of getting involved here and wanting to help you ground and materialize the energy. So focus on something that you want to create this week. Focus on something that you want to create. It can be, it feels like it could be something permanent, something big, something new, or it can simply be using the energy, like even like coloring in a coloring book or crocheting um, or cooking or like writing in your journal. It's like do something, do something, do something to transform this energy and turn it into something useful. Um, I'm also looking at this new crystal I found this weekend. I mean, I found it at a store. <laughs> this is bismuth, which I've always, I've never seen in person before. This is the first time I had a, a, that a store I went to had one in stock. So of course I had to get it. I'm still forming my relationship with this, but wow. And a little piece just fell off. Hello, little fragment. Very interesting. I also found a pair of sunglasses a while ago that are really interesting and the way they, they like in the way the lenses are they actually make me see rainbows whenever there is water just like the way the sunglasses are tinted when I look out the window and and like glass like looking at cars their went their windows become tinted with rainbows and the water goes rainbow tinted and of course this is all very rainbow right very rainbow very rainbow Unless I just became aware of my tangents in my in my mind, right? Sometimes I'm suddenly aware of what I've been saying. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how does this all tie together, right? How does this all tie together? We got all these different things happening. We got the Aries energy. We uh, be, oh, So the Aries energy is important because you are the vessel. You, you are like the fifth element. This is even all together. This actually feels to me like it adds up to magician energy with all of this stuff coming through you, right? The expansive, the expansiveness of judgment, the grounded materialization with the devil here the emperor with the self with the human being and the high priestess the bottom guiding all of this and it's like taking all of the colors of the rainbow but you're taking more than the colors of the rainbow you're taking all of the colors that are included in the spectrums of light that you can't perceive with your human vision, right? Humans only only perceive with our human eyeballs a small amount of colors, right? There are more colors that we could perceive if we had the biological equipment to do so. Or some people, some people can perceive ultraviolet, right? Some people can see that. And there are even animals on Earth that can see infrared and ultraviolet. And of course, there are more colors available than that. Um, somebody, somebody watching this, this me, you, you might start to see, this is very specific to like, you'll know if this is you, right? But if you start to see, um, you know, you, you might wonder if you're hallucinating and it wouldn't be entirely correct. It, it wouldn't be entirely incorrect to call this a hallucination. This has happened to me before when I was on, 
um, prescription steroids. Like when I was on prednisone, I had steroid induced hallucinations. But now I know that, I mean, even though they were hallucinations, they also weren't hallucinations, right? Um, if you ever start to see like, like looking at beams of light, like looking at the light and it's like, you can suddenly see the light. You can see the light. Like, <laughs> I mean, like literally like the light is like glimmering in the air and you can see it and it's shining. And it's like the light has color. Like it's no longer white light. Or if you're looking at leaves on the trees and they're like vibrant and glowing in a new way, it's because you're starting to see into color frequencies that you're not normally seeing, right? You, you can think of it as a hallucination. You can see it as just your third eye opening up it, it, it's all of us that's all spectrums on the same thing um so that's that's how it, that happened to me and um oh, that, also, that also happened to me once when I wasn't on any anything when I wasn't on any any kind of substance or anything um I, it was just 2012 and that was the intensity of the energy coming through in 2012 right where I was seeing into the ultraviolet and but that didn't maintain for me I don't typically see this but you know, some of you somebody somebody watching this could definitely start to be seeing into new color frequencies and it might be strange. Um, so just know that it, it's, if it's too much energy for you and if, if it's making you kind of fry your circuits, ground the energy, ground the energy, ground it so hard, <laughs> ground it so, 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 so hard. Okay. <sighs> what else is going on? Yeah, because I feel like the, the Jupiter Neptune conjunction, it, it's like for, it's like shadowing the energy of the whole week. Um, So there's like these layers, there's these layers to the week, right? The sun is in Aries, that's one layer. We have this Saturn influence coming in, that's one layer. Mercury just entered Taurus. So, you know, we have this Taurus influence already. Our minds are getting, wanting to be practical with um, with Mercury and Taurus or wanting to start figuring out how to make things work in the physical. Um, and then <laughs> Mars is going to be moving into Pisces on the 14th. Do I want to? Yeah, I do want to get a card on that. Um, I need a. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for the awkward cut. I got a little derailed. So I'm going to go ahead and get back on track with the card for Mars entering Pisces. And we have a card flipping out. And that's funny because I did see that in the beginning. Um, like underneath the deck, I actually cut the deck and, and by accident and saw it, but I shuffled it back in. That's telling me I shouldn't have shuffled it back in. Take. Well, take what you see. Take what you see. Isn't this interesting? We, we're pulling hard for Mars and we get the Empress, right? Very, very feminine in contrast to the masculine. So Mars entering Pisces. This is the masculine learning about his feminine side, right? Your own divine masculine energies, learning about femininity and taking, taking like a romp through a swamp or taking a, like, it's more like, <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> This, this is the energy of someone who has been very serious and put together and business oriented, like very, um, even like minimalistic, very just like I do what I need to do in order to get the job done type of energy and suddenly finding themselves in like a field full of fairies and unicorns and mermaids. And at first they're like, I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if I like this. This is kind of like too much, too much fantasy, too much water, too much emotion. But they find that it's, they, they start to in, learn to enjoy the beauty of the messiness and like the wonder and even the sensuality and the sexuality of this like magical unicorn fairy grove is what this feels like to me. It's like, take like the most straight laced, most um, like even, even kind of stuck up, even kind of um, uptight person that you can possibly imagine. And then imagine like taking them into fairy to like have a party with the fairies and the unicorns and the mermaids. It's like that. That's what this is. That's what this is. So very interesting. Mars entering Pisces. It's going to like, uh, increase your experience of magic in a way that might be uncomfortable for you, even for those of you who are already very tuned into the fairy realm and to all of the magical elementals and mystical creatures. It's like, this is going to get <laughs> extra delightful, like extra, extra delightful. It is like, I could feel it like sparkling and I gotta get, I gotta get, I gotta get a sacred destiny card on this. <laughs> Mars in Pisces. 
And it's interesting that this Mars is entering Pisces after, right? A couple days after the Jupiter Neptune conjunction, right? Because Jupiter and Neptune conjunct in Pisces are like, it feels like setting the stage for this, setting the stage for this. They're kind of like setting up a magical grove for Mars to enter, right? Setting up a magical grove for Mars to enter. And what is Mars going to find? <laughs> Mars is going to find happiness and dolphins and more to the point. This card, this is the sun, okay? this this I know the sun is only up there a little bit, but this card to me really emphasizes the sun. And that is more of like finding the abundance that you seek, right? Finding the abundance that you seek, but in this case, finding it in ways that are strange and magical and interesting. So this is like after the 14th when Mars is in Pisces and I think he should be in Pisces for almost two months um might be wrong on that don't quote me on that but he'll be in there for a bit um seek abundance in unusual ways and be ready to receive magic in unusual ways and everything is just going to get um magical and mystical and interesting which is funny because we've already been seeing that but this is like really really um something special something new I keep thinking about fairies, guys. This is like this is like fairies and unicorns are going to come hang out, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, and happiness, but this is also happiness and blessings of abundance. It's going to be very interesting. I am, I don't know. It's it's going to surprise you, whatever it is. It's going to surprise you. Um, what do we else have going on? Oh, of course, and this is all leading up to the full moon in Libra on the sixteenth. Yeah, on the sixteenth. Man, I can't I can't use this deck anymore because I already pulled out so many of the major arcana. So um, I'll keep using this one. Full moon in Libra. <laughs> Something makes me want to giggle. What is this? Oh wow. This is the hanged man. This would be the hanged man, but look how different this depiction is of the hanged man. It's not like you know, a man with a spear in his side hanging upside down from a tree. No, this is this beautiful being with a feather in her hand hanging down from the cosmos and the cosmos, like we have galaxies in her hair, right? This is a totally new perspective. And so the way this is coming through with the, with the Libra energy, you know, for some of you, this, I think for some people, for some people, the Libra full moon comes through as like largely an experience between interpersonal relationships, right? This could absolutely play out with you and someone else, like a romantic relationship, a family relationship, whatever. It can be playing out in the human and the physical, and I expect it will for most people, but for you guys in particular, it's also going to play out on a very, very cosmic level. And what was the bottom? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, cards, for absolutely confirming that this is going to play out on a cosmic level, right? We got the world here. We got the world. This person out here in walking in the desert, shining a light in the desert, keeping the light in the desert. And there's this very interesting moon figure up there. So you have been all been in, we've all been on this journey of balancing this relationship between self and the universe, right? Between you and the cosmos, you and the cosmos, balancing that out making sure that you remember and feel in every moment that you are an equal partner to the universe. You are in balance with the universe. It's your relationship between self and everything outside of you, right? The internal versus the external. You're going to have a completely new perspective on that, on like who you are in balance with the universe. And this is also taking on someone else's perspective. Like <laughs> the feeling I get from this is that you could, I mean, man, there's so many different ways this can play out. So some examples that are popping into my head are you could have, if this is like playing out largely in a romantic way for you, you could, you know, be staring into your partner's eyes or you guys could be in bed and you could have like <laughs> feelings of like, I want to say like telepathy, <laughs> like telepathic, right? Like not exactly telepathy and not exactly empathic connection, but like telepathic, empathic all rolled into one, right? Like, like going like whose head are we in really like like really experiencing what it feels like to be them like getting inside of their head in a whole new way maybe even being confused about whose head you're inside right like almost like feeling like you could even switch bodies okay feeling like you're inside of each other's bodies but like on a physical level perhaps yes but also on this like deep 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 spiritual level almost like you can switch consciousnesses very 
very interesting um but also playing out in this cosmic level is like some of you could suddenly find yourself like being a star or being a black hole or being a galaxy or being a universe like you could pop out of your body and experience like what like the, the this libra full moon is going to be an excellent time to be doing any kind of astral travel right meditating because it's like you can pop out and experience what it is to be the world right you're, you're gonna feel someone else's perspective and take it on in a whole new way like you know often we try to understand someone else's perspective and sometimes that's a bit of a struggle right sometimes it's a bit of a struggle to understand someone else's perspective but in this libra full moon have i been saying new moon it's, it's the full moon <laughs> libra full moon portal it's no longer going to be a struggle you are going to experience someone else's perspective in an entirely new way and yeah so the 17th that would be saturday right or the 16th man i i can't think right now i can't think i'm just going to read off of what i wrote here on the 17th that is sunday right okay so the libra full moon is happening on friday the Nope, I'm wrong. The 16th is Saturday. This is why I, I like lose all ability to think with my mind while I'm doing readings. So whatever, moving forward, I am including the mention here of Mercury conjunct Uranus in this reading, All even though this is happening next Sunday and I'm going to be filming a new video next Sunday because I wanted to forecast this or not even really forecast just forementioned it i just wanted to foremention it because mercury conjunct uranus the day after the full moon and the full moon is also in an air sign right so this is important to know about because mercury conjunct uranus is that's your lower mind and your higher mind synchronizing and mm, like a micro to macro translation that whenever there's mercury a, whenever there's a mercury uranus transit like aspect it's a micro to macro micro to macro as below so above as above so below um and it, it can be really really electric and intense and uh, you were going to be feeling that for more than just that one day right mercury moves pretty fast but it's going to be more than just one day of that so that is entirely all tied up with the libra full moon the mercury uranus conjunctant the electrification of your mind um and again that's like <laughs> man if you want a day to synchronize with your higher self on a level that you have not experienced yet this is going to be the perfect day like weekend right this is the whole perfect weekend the perfect few days libra full moon balancing you and your higher self out and then the micro to macro translation of your lower mind and your higher mind um like synchronizing and resetting this is like yeah you could massively download whatever you want from your higher self like request something from your higher self <laughs> make a request of your higher self and you could absolutely receive it over this weekend right over the full moon over the mercury uranus conjunction Requ make a request because it's like the portal to your higher self will be wide 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 open um synchronized synchronized your lower mind and your higher mind will be synchronized so it's like you won't even need to download it it's like it will just appear in your mind it will just appear in your mind and you will receive it it will just be there a direct one-to-one -one portaling through from higher self to human self knight of crystals don't forget to ground this <laughs> don't forget to ground this um and anything that is taking longer than you want it to don't worry about it because it is happening in perfect timing absolutely in perfect timing i've been noticing that a lot with things just like i got so many things on the back burner and it's like it doesn't matter what i do i can't see quite seem to get them off the ground it's fine everything is happening in perfect timing and with all of this intense air energy over the weekend you might feel like you might have very strong feelings about time <laughs> um and balance that out with the groundedness right that's why we have this capricorn energy you know the saturn energy and the taurus energy coming around reminding you to bring it back down to earth bring it back down to earth you don't want to just keep it up in the sky you you, you got to bring it down got to bring it down um 
And it's reminding me, yeah, the, the fact that the Mercury Uranus conjunction is happening isn't in, in that the fact that it is happening in Taurus is we are being invited to apply, to apply what we discover, to apply what we learn. And it's okay to focus on bettering your physical human life. <laughs> King of Swords. The King of Swords, right? Downloads and retrieves divine information and applies it for the betterment of all. Applies it for the betterment of all. The Nine of Cups. Your wish will be granted. What did I just say? You know, ask something of your higher self. Ask and you shall receive. Your wish shall be granted. The Nine of Cups. It, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like sometimes maybe you are shy about asking for something physical because you think, oh, if I'm to be spiritual, I shouldn't be asking for a new car or something like that, right? But it's like, no, if you're like, if you could really use a physical manifestation to come out of nowhere, this is the time to ask for it and just wait for it to appear. Um, don't be surprised if it takes a little longer than you think for it to get here, but it is coming. It is coming. And the final thing happening like all the way out on the 18th is the sun square Pluto, right? This actually takes us full circle to one of the very first things I talked about in this video with, you know, I was talking about Mercury squaring Pluto, right? Mercury squaring Pluto as Pluto, as, as Mercury moved into Taurus, right? And how that was really um, intense and transformational. Same kind of thing is going to be happening again, but this time with the sun. So your solar energy is going to be squaring Pluto. So this is going to be um, tension, chaos, and metamorphosis inside of yourself. So this is really, really funny to me. We have all of this insanity happening, right? All of these crazy things happening. The Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, right? Mars moving into Pisces, bringing all of that magic. Libra full moon balancing yourself in the universe. Mercury conjunct Uranus and Taurus, like where you will be downloading your next great revelation, right? Ground, like gra downloading and grounding your next big shift in consciousness and then the sun squaring Pluto to like solidify the metamorphosis, to solidify the metamorphosis. And we'll probably talk more about this next week, but I guess we will see what is happening a week from now because <laughs> who knows what could be happening a week from now. <laughs> Step out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah, so you're moving on up, you're climbing the staircase, right? You're climbing the mountain, you're climbing the ladder, you're moving up. This is the North Node moment. I remember last week, didn't didn't the South Node card come out? Don't let your past hold you back, right? So you, res you just spent the week resolving South Node issues and now you're moving more into the North Node. So it's like instead of resolving your past, going backwards and kind of releasing the past, now it's moving forwards into greater and greater and greater heights focusing on moving forward, focusing on the future. And yeah, we will definitely talk more about these last two aspects more next week. <laughs> Bottom of the deck, expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. So we are already being guided to look ahead to the new moon in Taurus in a few weeks because that's going to be an eclipse and we got the new moon in Taurus and the, and the new moon eclipse card. So <laughs> as you can see, this is we're slowly getting the return of complexity, right? The last couple of weeks between, you know, as soon as we had the equinox, it was like simplify, simplify, simplify. And we had a few weeks of really enjoying that. Um, but we're building back up to some kind of new level of complexity, but it's like fresh and new. It's not... Um, The complexity that we saw for the first three months of 2022 was really like collective complexity. This feels more personal, right? Because we're still in like the personal zone of the zodiac, right? Aries, Taurus, Gemini, even Cancer, right? Cancer starts to get more um, collective, but the first three signs are very kind of personal. And this is like, I don't want to say that, I don't know if it's like your personality is getting more complex. It 
it's like you are tempering and maturing your your inner rebellious teenager right there there with this um the first couple of weeks of Aries season, there was this inner child healing. And I think I talked about this inner teenager healing, right? That is starting to mature. Sun is still in Aries, but it's getting more advanced into the more mature, um, you know, what, what's the word? Degrees, <laughs> the more mature degrees of Aries. You're maturing rapidly and that is going to allow for a, like a, an outgrowth into, um, I'm actually seeing like synapses growing. It's almost like you have more synapses coming online in your brain. Like your brain is growing, your brain is densifying. But that's also obviously also happening, like not just with your human physical brain, but with your consciousness. Um, connecting with your parallel selves again, like networking again and again and again with more and more and more layers of your parallel selves. And you could synchronize with aspects of your parallel selves that might make you uncomfortable, actually. That might make you uncomfortable. You might find some of your parallel selves are doing things that you would never do and you would go like, this is so strange. How could my parallel self be doing that? Very strange. It's like um, some of my parallel selves, like the like the parallel me's, like the, the some of the, the parallel shies are like they smoke. <laughs> and I, 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 you know, synchronize with them in dreams a lot. And I have all these dreams of smoking and I've never smoked a single cigarette in my entire life. Um, and I hate the smell of cigarettes. Like I, in this life, I would never, I have never once been tempted to even try smoking. Right. But some of me also, some of me smoke and I find that so strange. I'm like, why would I do that? <laughs> why would I do that? That's so strange. But I have these dreams of being my parallel selves who smoke. I, I, it's like, I have a whole ritual about it. I can feel the cigarette in my hand and I can in, like enjoy inhaling the smoke and I hand talk with the cigarette and I like punctuate how I speak with like the way I blow the smoke out. And it's like, I can feel myself doing it. It feels natural and normal. Like I've been doing it for years and I like it. It's very funny to me. It's just, it's like one of those things going like, why would my parallel self do that? And that may be one of the things that you come to understand, right? Some of this new perspective, you're going to be taking on the perspective of some of your parallel selves taking on the perspective of some of your parallel selves and understand why they are the way they are right and you might think that all of yous should be exactly the way you are but that's not the case at all some of yous are incredibly different in ways that might very much surprise you but you're going to understand why they are that way and why them being that way is no better or worse than the way you are it's simply different face, like different facets, different facets, different facets. The word here is facets, multifaceted, your own unique multifaceted nature. You will take on more of those. So you could find yourself suddenly developing new, like suddenly embodying new habits that you never did before. It's like sometimes, you know, you, you slowly take on a new habit, like you slowly learn to drink coffee, right? That's something that I did. I never drank coffee until I like turned 30 and I've slowly, slowly, slowly been, over the last few years been getting into coffee more and more and more. So suddenly, sometimes you develop a new habit over time like that. Um, but you could find yourself waking up one morning and like suddenly having a different habit. And it'd be like, it feels, it, it could feel like you've always done this it could be anything, right? I don't, I don't just mean like bad habits, like, you know, bad quote, quote unquote, bad habits, like smoking or drinking coffee. It could be anything, like literally anything, including a good habit, right? You could drop out of habits that you don't want anymore. It could be, it could be anything. Um, but you could suddenly just feel like, oh, this feels so normal. It feels like I've done this every day for my whole life, but you didn't, but you know what? One of your parallel selves did and you are like integrating into each other, right? You're becoming more of yourself, integrating into, into one being. It, it, it's like, Earlier, I was saying something about braiding with all of the colors of the rainbow, right? Including colors of the rainbow that you can't see with your physical eyes. You're also braiding together all of these different rays of your own self, right? Rays of your own self all coming together to be inside of you energetically. When before, maybe you felt like a singular personality. Or maybe you felt like maybe you had a few various personalities competing for space inside of your your human body there's going to be more views <laughs> more views inside of you more views inside of you and I, I talk about this quite a bit right like becoming more of yourself you know having a soul braid experience and becoming more of yourself um this is slightly different because this feels more like not so much higher self energy coming in but like parallel self energy like 
literally the different aspects of you with the same name and the same physical appearance on, on earth, right? Like just different timeline iterations of yourself, timeline iterations of you in this current car incarnation, right? Different iterations of your current incarnation all braiding together. It's interesting to ponder what that might mean about what is happening with all of the timelines. Cause I, it's like they're, it's like there's be it's like there's less of them. It's like there's becoming less of them. Like we're cleaning up timelines, cleaning up timelines and braiding them all together. So, you know, th this number is purely for example purposes only, but just imagine if you had a hundred timelines and you looked at them and you were like, okay, half of those don't need to exist by themselves anymore. How can we clean this up? How can we make this more efficient? How can we take the best parts of everything that we want moving forward. Well, you could integrate all of these timelines and then end up with maybe 25 timelines, right? All because like, you've braided them together, you've woven them together. And now there are fewer iterations of yourself going on, but no energy has actually been lost except for any energy that you didn't want anymore, right? Any, um, any things that you and your parallel selves were doing that you don't want anymore that you were just like, okay, well, like we're done with that. We're just going to recycle it. That energy, um, just you know was recycled back into the universe and now you just have all of the parts of you that you want but you're so much more efficient now this is really important because it's like just imagine if your consciousness was spread out over a hundred timelines and your consciousness is absolutely spread out over way more than a hundred timelines this is just purely for example purposes right so if you were spread out of a, over a hundred timelines that is inefficient right that that means that each timeline gets less energy because the amount of energy that you, your higher consciousness is putting into these hundred timelines is has a set amount, right? It's not necessarily limited, like limited, limited, but it, there is like a set amount that your higher consciousness is going to put towards this project at any given moment, right? Um, so you're making this more efficient by consolidating many of these timelines. And that means that you're suddenly going to be embodying <laughs> bits and pieces, some, sometimes large, sometimes small, of your parallel selves. They used to be in separate timelines, but now you're integrating them into be into the timeline that you're on, right? The timeline that you're on right now. So you, you're all coming together. <laughs> it's going to be like a party inside of your own body, because this is if this is all about getting more. Um, more timelines into the, your one vessel that you are like sitting in in this moment watching this video right you have more timelines partying it up inside of you more aspects of your parallel selves inside of you and the last thing i want to say about this is the jupiter neptune conjunction is going to be expanding you for this right because if you want to fit more of your parallel parallel selves into you you need to expand first, right? You need to expand first. So isn't that interesting how this whole week is happening <laughs> in a way that makes so much sense, right? In a way that makes so much sense. We cleared out our past, left, left a bunch of stuff behind. Then we go through this hmm, rapid, rapid, rapid expansion. And that is why there's all these messages of like grounding, right? And this earth energy, this Taurus energy, because this does involve your physical vessel. This does involve your physical vessel, right? So that's why the earth energy is involved. And then you balance self and higher self and then weave together you and all, or not all of them, but you and many of your parallel selves all coming to hang out inside of your body. So <laughs> have fun with that, guys. We will dig more into this in about a week <laughs> once we see how this has all gone down. So sending you so much love and light. Bye.